The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician Hour, and what we're looking at here is a Friday the 13th session. And the Dow, once again, oh, this is so fascinating, the way it's following a particular chart pattern that we've been looking at for my subscribers who've been following it closely. And um, more importantly, today being Friday, it's the last day of that Nadex competition, some fantastic winners, just unbelievable uh, price movement. Now what I'm looking at is uh, the, the perspective that we want to look at today is on a purely technical basis in the Chapman wave. We're going to look at uh, different uh, different techniques. This is a technical Friday where we can go into a closer detail for your calls um, into the Chapman Wave methodology. And I would first of all like to say thank you to uh, Tom and Daryl and Steve for th uh, two fabulous hours. Uh, really important here at TFN Educational Network. We do our absolute best to be able to, to give you um, a perspective on the market that is a little different to what you'll normally hear. I wouldn't say a little different, actually, it's a lot different. And uh, even more importantly, what I'm looking at here is <clears throat> how the cumulative effect of all, all your hosts is just, it's phenomenal. It's really like, it's, we call it Tiger University. It absolutely is Tiger University. And 1689. So let me, let me go through a couple of things right now. Uh, 1616. Uh, 89. A round number high, 16.89 in the futures. Remember, I like to always show the futures. I do this for my subscribers. I show the 120-minute chart. Um, we've got another channel. There was a beautiful up channel that was broken. Now there's another uh, for, um, um, particular move to the upside that has taken the Dow from the breakout of the 16, uh, I would call it the 16.65 level on the E-mini December, broken out all the way to uh, a peak F. Now we've gone sideways in another rectangle pattern. These rectangle patterns have a way of lasting a lot longer than you would think. This could, in fact, last a chunk of the day. Just trading within a fairly narrow a range. The Dow's a little stronger than the S&P. The Dow's up 55 at 50,356. The S&P's up two and a half at 1685. The Comp Index is down five at 3710. Putting a little pressure on the Qs. Gold is down 12. It was down a lot more earlier at 1317.60. You've got uh, silver down 20. 23 at 2191. Platinum's down 70 cents. You've got high grade copper back under 320 again at 319.75. Ah, that's, that's telling me something. Actually, with all this that's going on right now, I'm formulating in my mind, finally, I'm getting a picture of what I'm looking at, why I'm looking at it, where the parameters are that we could look at for the upside, wh what they could be, and um, what the end result will be over a period of three to four weeks. And this is going to be really interesting to see if it works out. You've got bonds um, up 8, 30 seconds at 129, 29, 30 seconds. And you've got the dollar up 13, at, 13 ticks at uh, 81.625. Before we get into Technical Friday, I've got a question of the, a, a, on the line. I've got Freeman in Dallas. Hi, Freeman. How are you? Hey, Bob, how's it going? Very well. I got you real quickly, didn't I, huh? <laughs> hey, I'm looking at uh, and I'm Whoops. I started again. You're looking at what? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, Freeman, your 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 cell phone just uh, decided to uh, poop out on us. So I'm uh, I'm going to do this. You're looking at, I believe it's TSL. Now I'm not sure. I I, I should have asked if you had a position, but I didn't know it would be cut off. Uh, TSL is Trina Solar Limited. It's trading at eleven dollars and forty five cents. Um, okay. Let me j ah, you're there. Okay. Um, so yeah, are you are you long? Um, yes, but it's it's TSL, not Tesla. No, no, TSL. Yeah, I've got that. TSL uh, is yeah. uh, Trina Solar, right? Yes. I got into there when it tested that 9 EMA. Do you think that 9 EMA was a good test? That, okay, so this is on the daily chart. So uh, yeah. at 
Yes. So you got in at around 11.05 or 11.08? Whoops, gone again. Um, I tell you what, your connection's not so good. Why don't you call right back? I'm going to do listen. the work on... Uh, let I'll me just... On okay, question is... Ah, uh, you, you, you're coming in and out. So, look, don't, don't, just call me back. There's no problem. I'm going to do my analysis. I'm doing it right now. Uh, A, B, and that's really C. Unless I use an instant restart, which I'm uh, not an instant restart... Uh, Phantom Peak. Oh, there it is. I knew I had to do that carefully. Okay, now this is what I'm looking at. So uh, as soon as you get back, uh, Freeman, just give a yell and say, I'm back. But it doesn't matter because I'm looking at this very closely. This is an interesting stock. I had this on my list of just stocks in the solar area that I would watch some time ago. I don't remember when. And then it just it just started to tank with all of the solar stocks, and it's, it's been completely off my list now for quite a long time. I'm looking at this, and I'm saying to myself, wow, it has a certain consistency, and that consistency says at this particular point to be going along, it has to do something very, very quickly. Now, let me explain. TSLA in the daily chart has made a peak E-top. And the peak E top is at twelve dollars and I think it was eight twelve dollars and eighteen cents on um, three days ago, four days ago. It's pulled back, and the fast moving average is still acting very well. The stochastic's at eighty three percent, but it is pulling back. Now the pattern that I'm looking at says that it's very different to the high that it made back on the twenty uh, first of May. Now, for those of you who are not uh, used to my methodology, let me just take a moment here while while we're waiting to see if uh, if Freeman is able to get back online. Now, he said that he did buy it at that particular point. We've got a moment here, so there's no real rush. What I want you to do is this: I'm, I want you to open this out so that you can see a stock that has had a huge trading range, not in so much price but in percentages. So it goes all the way from the, um, now let me just do this, A, B, fails at C. So that's the C minus. Makes a lower low, so it refreshes. That's a brand new start. It goes A, B, C, and all I can do is call this a C1 and a C2 double top, and then it pulls back. So it has a history of only going to a C, and then it pulls back. Where is it now in the monthly chart? In leg C. But the technicals are way different, and the price movement is much more concerted, a much, a much, a much more orderly way. And what is it doing? It's going to that very ugly candle of the of September of a year of two years ago, where it opens at 15.79, has a high of 15.85, and plunges to round number six, closes at six dollars and eight cents, and then. It goes on its merry way after a little bit of a bounce down to a low of four of two dollars and four cents. So here's my thinking: two point oh four. I've been trying to follow the. Um, I don't know exactly what area of solar they're in, but I've been trying to follow some of them, and I do it periodically. So I don't have a feeling for it on a consistent basis. All I can say is that the weekly chart has gone over the nine period exponential moving average, which is at ten dollars and sixty nine cents. At it's trading at eleven dollars and forty six cents or forty five cents, and it has a high um, of twelve dollars and eighteen cents with a round number low this week of eleven. That says to me immediately a close below 11 next week would be a negative, but now I have to put the whole piece of the puzzle together because if you're looking at this stock, there's a left side, right side price time match. Let me just squeeze it a little bit. There you are. So don't forget, uh, Freeman, if you're back at any point, just give a yell and say, I'm back. But uh, more importantly, what I want you is to go to that high. I want to go to my first real candle of importance, and that's that one there. I'm going to do a right side price time match, and it's extended beyond. Fine. Now I can go to the next one, and lower down, and I'm, all I'm doing here, folks, is I'm taking key points, key point high to key point low to the right side. It's as simple as that. And if the price time is matching and I can do a diagonal right there, oh, one bar late. But that's okay. It's perfect because it gives me a sense of, of the timeliness. Now, what I'm fascinated with in this particular methodology is how many times 
Let's see, so that would be there, and that has to go to that. So that doesn't even touch. There you go. How many times within a move to the upside or the downside in our mind's eye, I say the mind's eye because it isn't the visual aspect, it's the mind that says, wow, we've come back quickly, or wow, we've come back slowly, and all that's happened, look at this, in the Dow, all that's happened is you've had a very methodical move to the upside and a methodical move to the down, and we've had the same thing now from the left side to the upside, right to the resistance in the 11, mid 11,300s. So now let's go back to this chart, because patterns repeat over and over. In this particular pattern, it is just now bumping into the high of $12.19 from back in um, February of 2012. Now, more important than that, that it's bumping into that high, is the fact that it is coming into it, with the MACD still very strong and the stochastic at 91%. So far, very good action in the weekly chart. So, now let's go to the daily chart. The daily chart says the history of this particular daily chart is that it's made its move to a D or an E, especially if it goes to an E, which was the last one, and that candle was met with weakening technicals, in other words, Technical Friday, I'll talk about this in a little more detail. Look at this way the stochastic has made lower highs as the price was going higher. Look at the way the MACD deflected, that fast-moving average deflected above the slow-moving average, the red line, and continued the price movement all the way to that candle. This pattern is way different because it's saying two things. It's saying, first of all, that yes, there is one particular sign, actually two particular signs that say, be a little careful here because it's getting a little, I can't call it toppy. I would say that there are a, a couple of technicals that say within the next few bars you could start to see a pullback. You could, it doesn't say you, you should, it says you could. Why? Because that moving average, that little red line, that fast moving average that you might just be able to see, yep, I can see it in the, on, on, on Tiger TV, has just crossed above. And that says within a couple of bars, you might make a double top and pull back. That means that getting in at 11, I'd say whatever it is, 11.08, Freeman, is, um, is good. So... Uh, good on a very short-term basis. So here I am. We're going to pull up the 120-minute chart. Yep, it's the same sort of thing. It says that at this particular moment, if the price doesn't take out 11.64, it's at 11.48. And it doesn't do that really quickly, either by the end of the day or by on my, by Monday. If there is a, a slide, a slide below $10.90, you've got to be careful. So all I'm going to say is, Freeman, there's a chance that you're just a tad early here. A chance. I say a chance. Why? Because it's still walking the nine period exponential moving average. So what I'm going to say, I know you can trade in an intermediate term, but you can also trade very short term. I would put a stop on at least part of your position underneath $10.90, $10.88. I'd take something off at least to say, whoa, I might be a little earlier. I might have to come back in at about $10.60. So I hope that helps you, Freeman. So... You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
TFNN is having an open house in the Tiger's Den for two weeks, and the best part is that everyone is invited and you just have to be a member at TFNN. The open house in the Tiger's Den has already begun and will last through our week-long virtual trading competition, which ends September 13th. Use this time to exchange trading ideas with other traders in the virtual chat room and to discuss trading strategy. For all the information and to take part in the Tiger's Den open house, log on to TFNN.com today. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. He's lagging. It's up 337. The Qs are lagging even more. They are down 11 cents at 77.91. I just want to do this. We're going to go to our next caller, Michael, in one second. But I wanted to do this before, and then I thought I'd take uh, Freeman first because I know he's always in a bit of a rush. Uh, Freeman, I like your stock longer term. I'm just saying on a short term basis, uh, that's what I'd be watching for. Um, this is the, the diamonds. I had a question um, uh, in the den earlier about the diamonds, the two minute chart, the Chapman wave. You see that open. Opening silver that, that spiked up sharply, that can often happen. It's like the E-minis that spike up. So it went to peak A, peak B, a very quick move from the 152 80s all the way to 153, um, 56. Then what it did is it pulled back. Now what's important is uh, 153, I'm sorry, 150. 370 yeah so and then what happened is that it, it pulls pulls back and it has an inside buy mode and it goes peak a and b that's the question was right there and i said as long as the stochastic and macd are acting well it should go to a c and then a d and there was the left side right side price time frame it went exactly there it missed uh, going to the bottom of the of that trend line but it went to d and now it's going sideways and acting quite well let's go to michael in toronto canada hi michael how are you Michael, you there? Good morning. How are you? Okay, fine. Good. Uh, you know, with the Syria in the news and oil spiking up there, uh, I, I thought 
I would look at the contrarian approach to this and and examine the inverse ETFs. And in particular, I wanted to ask you, what's the technical outlook for the DTO? So if you're looking at the DTO, if I use the USO as the core, United States Oil Fund, would that be good? Uh, I think so. Because it looks... You, have. you don't... You can't just type in DTO on your system. Oh, there I can absolutely, I can absolutely, I can absolutely do that. I got it right here, DTO, and I got it. But yeah. what I'm looking at is that the price moved to the downside because it is a, a, an ETF. Uh, it might even be an ETN. Um, has so much. Uh, no, it's an ETF. It has so much deterioration in it because of the makeup of it, and this is a, this is the. Uh, uh, power share. So is this the 100 percent or the 200 percent? No, it's 200 percent. Yeah, um, you see. So, so let me just explain. If you look at this and you do a mirror image, you get the USO. And here's the USA. If you're looking at Tiger TV, it's a lot clearer. What I wanted to do, I've already got this notated. I wanted to show a couple of things, and it's a little bit clearer because you'd be trading the exact mirror image. Not exact, but really close to the mirror image. <clears throat> In this particular ETF, there are a couple of things that have struck me, and I've been notating this uh, for quite a while. And I'm going to just draw in my channel lines right there right there and I'm going to put another channel line which I very often do but I only do it when the price itself tells me what I need to do. doing folks is I'm looking at the United States oil fund LP is trading at 38.59 it's down 28 cents that means that the I'm going to just do this here because it's a separate chart I'm going to do this here. oh and there goes the DIA up to that trend line very good uh, the DIA I'm going to change that to the uh, DTO, just so that I get the price of the DTO. The DTO right now is up 42 cents, up a 1.38 percent. The USO is down 71 percent. So it's not exactly a 200 percent inverse relationship. It's like a one. It's like a 180 something percent. It's close right. enough. So I think I'm on the right track. So let's do this. I'm going to keep the price there, just so that I know what I'm doing. I'm going to show you a couple of things here within this channel. And now I'm going to expand this. It may made a peak it made a peak d the last one in the Chapman wave was at 7 night on the 19th of July at 3862 it pulled back made a cup formation made a peak a and then an a minus because it fell down to a trough c from that trough c at 3635 started a brand new buy what looked like a brand new buy mode so I would put a actually I should put a plus sign I don't usually do that when it's in the middle of something so I that's a potential buy signal that actually went to high, it went to peak A, peak B, with a 39 round number uh, low, but a 39.46 high. And then the last one was a 39.54. Within that, there's another channel that's going to be really important. And I like the price itself, even though it's not a parallel line. I like the price itself to dictate to me, to tell me very clearly what exactly I should be looking at rather than just arbitrarily picking up something and what it says if the USO pulls back and it pulls back underneath first of all that trend line which would make it at about 3802 but actually it's easier than that if it goes under 3802 it is below the left side low of the tenth so here's my analysis the technicals are very poor both in the MACD and the slow stochastic and on the opposite side on the TMO, I want you to do the relationship. So hold on, we'll be right back, and I'll show you the relationship because this is a strengthening now. In, oh, not TMO, it's DTO. I'll be at DTO in a second. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. 
Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here. We are on with Michael and Toronto Canada. We're looking at DTO, which, in fact, is a power share. It's, it's the inversion, 100% inversion of, I believe, the USO, because the charts are exactly the same, but in a mirror image, not exactly the same, but really close. Now, this is what I'm looking at, Michael. In a sense, if ever there was an opportunity to um, to go short the USO or to buy the DTO, probably this is the moment because all the USO needs to do is to slip uh, 30 to 50 cents, which is really nothing for this particular index, and it'll start to take out the support of, uh, at least the support of the trend line, and then if it takes out the 38.03 low of the, of the 10th of September, um, there's a good chance that it's going to pull back, and it'll pull back maybe 37.50 to 37. But here's what I'm looking at. The weekly chart is making a peak E as we speak, because there's very little chance that by the end of the day, uh, the crew, of course anything can happen, but crude oil will go to 39.54, at least the USO will go to 39.54, um, it's at 38.58 right now. 
um, it's in the lower part of the candle, and the candle is what I call a Roman candle. And what usually I look at these at bottoms, I don't look at them as to at tops. You'll see that this one made the same kind of candle back on the 19th weekly chart, the 19th of April, with a low of 30.79, and it never filled that at all. It, it becomes an extremely bullish pattern if it starts to break away from it. So this is what I'm looking at. The 200 period moving average is right where we are, 3850s. The nine period moving average is at 3797 and so far it's held that every time it's pulled back so right. my thinking here is that uh, just for, I might be wrong, but from the tone of your voice, it seems to me like you were looking at a position play that could probably probably last a few weeks or maybe longer. Is that correct? Correct. I'm, I'm looking for an oil crash. Yes. Now, if you're looking for an oil crash, then the best thing that I could say to you is then if you're looking for a crash, then you must be prepared for a stop of uh, 39.54 of a one about a one point stop and if that's the case then I would say to you I don't really see crash in the chart but you know crashes they, the, the, the very concept of a crash is they just come out of the blue mm -hmm. so I'm going to suggest that you just have a little nibble right here I don't know if you play options or, or trade options but all you I take watch the options like I watch what the USO is doing the the front month, and I see huge block activity, right? And I use that. Wait, wait, do you see block of, Do you see block activity on the call of the put side? I see on the call side the major. They've been writing the the 38s and the 39s and the 40s. So they've been writing them, okay? Writing them, so, big blocks. Like we're talking 200, 500 uh, block uh, writes of, of the 39 out of the money call options. Okay, then if that's the case. Uh, and, that, and you're talking about on the on the USO? Yeah, like this is the front month. This is the September contract. Yeah, no, I contract. understand. Okay. And, and like so yesterday, this... I saw big blocks, and that that gave me the confidence to get into the inverse ETF. Okay, so here's this is it's real easy for me. I would do this if it breaks if the USO breaks above thirty nine oh one. It's just a heads up to say, hey, there could be a retest of the high that we just saw of thirty nine. Mm -hmm. Uh, 54, but mm -hmm. if it breaks above 39.54, I would not. I would not be in the position that you asked me my my opinion. I would not be in the position. That's number one. <clears throat> yeah. Number two, okay. I think for a one point stop, or using the USO as your stopping point, not the uh, DTO, I would say take a small position. Yeah. I think for a one point stop, a three, not even a three yeah. percent risk. Uh, it's. I think it's really worth it if if that's if that's your reading. I don't see that from my perspective because the stochastics at ninety percent in the weekly. MACD is still very good. I actually think it's going to trade sideways within a range between forty, maybe forty and a quarter, forty point fifty, and maybe thirty seven twenty to thirty six eighty. That's the wiggle room that I give it. But yeah. I think for your particular analysis. I would consider one point stop. You can get in now. I think that that's a pretty reasonable risk, small position. I would add to the position if the USO takes out 3803, forgets to 3790, right. I would then add. I think that's the best way I would approach it based on what you're looking at. It's not necessarily my interpretation, but that's not the issue. You asked me about the, yeah. the analysis. That's my analysis. I hope that helps on you. Can I ask you one question? On the yes. USO weekly chart that you have on the screen right now, do you see an ascending wedge formation? I see a pattern, and I've looked at this very closely for quite a while. <clears throat> I see a pattern of the H, that big H that fails at a peak C-, minus, which says it's very negative and it should take out the low. Well, it did, but just by a hair, and it did a left side, right side price time match with the inside Chapman with inside wedge. Then it made mm -hmm. another H and another H, lowercase h, and now all of a sudden what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the potential for some kind of, it's not, the shape itself is not exactly the pattern, but I'm also an artist, so I'm going to give it this kind of pattern. Oops, you're not going to be able to see it. There's a pattern that says it's in a very, very broad cup formation, like that. You can see the chart with tremendous resistance in this area here, which is what I was talking about right there, and very good support initially, and that's why your crash scenario says if there's a crash, USO will take out 31 
in a heartbeat. It'll just go right through it if there's anything that that that, that resembles a crash in uh, uh, in crude. So you're thinking that crude oil will break to the downside, mm-hmm. which means that the dollar probably would spike. Well. That's the scenario, and I, I can't disagree with the scenario. I just can say that it's walking in the night period, moving average, it's acting very well. There is a chance that if it breaks out to the upside, you'll know very quickly, because if it gets to 40.55, somewhere around there, immediately yeah. I'll be looking at the upside. And, and you can see the left side, upside um, resistances. There's been more trading on spike basis towards the upside and a lot more trading towards building support on the downside between 34 and 31 and, and, uh, and, and three quarters. So I think okay. that's very clear. Thank you for your analysis. And you know what? I'm also going to ask if you, if you have a chance, try to call Andy Hecht because he does a lot of work with, with the, few, the, the, the different commodities in this regard. Larry does the... Uh, the Fibonacci and the uh, Garpies, yeah. etc. But Andy looks at the kind of scenario that you might be looking at. So this is just a recommendation. Hey, thanks for the call. Very good question. So far, I'm looking at it and saying the 200 period moving average at 38.50 is like a magnet. And that's the way I have to look at it at this particular point. Thanks so much. I'm going to be following Thank this real much. closely. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend. You too. Keep in touch. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Let's go to Mike in Ormond Beach, Florida. We're going way up north, way down south. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hey, Basil. Um, I try to follow you as often as I can, but with my work schedule, it's tough. But anyway, I'm looking at the Dow on yes. a daily chart. And should I, should I think about going with a short-term short, such as, as the dog, uh, you know, no. kind of kind of looking. All no. right. and then, but well, let then me just show you it, something. On a this weekly is... chart, it looks like we're getting we're starting another uptrend. Well, let me do this. This is the analysis I gave my subscribers this morning to my opening call. And you know, if you if you if if you are someone who's at work all the time and you aren't able to give the market that much uh, daily uh, analysis, but you want to look, uh, you know, later on uh, in the evenings or so, you know, my my my. The work that I do on the, the trends is something that just might interest you. So that what I'm looking at here in the, in the Dow daily is that from the low of June the 24th at 14,551, I've numbered the candles. And candle number 11 was yesterday, and it was a doji back in, uh, sorry, candle number 11 on the uh, 10th of July was candle number 11. Okay. Candle number 11 Candle number 10 yesterday, with an almost identical matching pattern, was candle number 10. Today's number 11, and it broke this essentially kind of a doji-type candle yesterday, mm-hmm. and it's bumping up against strong resistance in the 15,330s. I'm going to make the recommendation that on any pullback... I would be looking at the long side into next week. I know there's, there's Fed speak and this speak and that speak... If I'm correct, and this is leg B in the Chapman Wave methodology, okay, and the MACD at the daily? Ni- and, the, and the daily, and the stochastic is at 97 percent, and the MACD is expanded, I would be looking to go long. Okay. I would not be looking to go short at all. That also says that if there's a gap down on Monday, that could make peak B. If there's a new high on Tuesday, that would make leg C. If there's a gap down on Wednesday, that would make peak C. If there's a gap up on Thursday, that would make leg D. And a gap down on Friday, that would make peak D. So the earliest that I can get a D, if there's this absolute whipsaw with new highs, no new high, new high, no new high, is a confirmation of a peak D a week from today. Okay. That's the quickest you can get it. But I always have to mention that when you're underneath a previous major high, I have to, as you've seen here, I've, I've typed in a gray letter A. Oh, what happened to my A? It just disappeared. Let me put it back in. And I call it a gray A because if it was at new recovery highs, I could call it, I go into the blue on the white background, and that's a confirmation. This is a pattern that says at any point because you're underneath the previous high, you can fail, mm-hmm. but it also says if the stochastic and MACD are even stronger than they were um, at this level uh, back in June, the weight of evidence says that we should be going higher. Okay. So 
I have to say to you, I would not be looking at the put, put side. I'm going to be looking at the puts. The, the, sorry, the short side. I'm going to be looking at the short side going into maybe options expiration next week, or I'm going to be looking at it the following week. We might see that options expiration isn't in fact at the top. It happens a week later or so. All I'm saying is that I'm following my waveform. It's unlikely that in this particular scenario we'll get we'll get an up down up down up down day. It looks to me like you'll have more like two to three days of move once you've made the peak and then you have to come back and make a new a new leg up so that would give you leg C I haven't even got peak B so if on Monday it goes one penny above today's high let's just say for a moment that 15,380.90 is the high today mm -hmm. Monday it pops up to 15,380.91 point one cent in a something that's trading at 15,300 and something, that one cent extends a leg B. That's the methodology I use. Right. I'm also going to show you a chart here that I think is quite fascinating. This is a chart for those of you who are new to my work. I'm going to show you just for the moment. This is, the, this is just a chart. This is the S&P back in 2005. Here it is with bars. It doesn't, it's hard to make out anything there, but as soon as you put in candles, you've got a whole bunch of information. But as soon as you put the Chapman Wave methodology of notating in uppercase letters on the upside and lowercase on the downside, you can go peak A, B, C, D. This even goes to E and an F, and then it, it, it falls very sharply. So if I'm going to stick to my rule, just as I try to stick to it when it was going up before, I have to be looking at the long side. And all our trades at this particular point are looking for buys rather than shorts, except that it was one short we tried uh, two days ago. We missed it. It's acting, that stock's acting very poorly, but we did not get it. So at this particular point, I'm looking at further upside action. This, I said, would be, I, I've shown it here. I said 15,332s was the left side. I spoke on the show about it. The big ugly candle of the 15th of August with a high of 15,332 plummeted down to 15,094. That ugly, ugly candle resistance, that's what we're trying to tackle right here. And so far, it's been successful. The next level will be the candle high of 15,504 of the 13th of August. So any pullback, I would treat as a, as a buying opportunity to go long, and you could have a reasonable stop. Let's just say you were getting into the DIA, if that's your vehicle of, uh, that you use. Mm -hmm. So in the case of the DIA, I would not be, uh, I would think a one and a half point stop, a 1%, even a one and a half percent or 2% stop is fine on a small position. And that says, in this particular case, the diamonds would be targeting 154.97 sometime early next week. So I hope that helps you. Yes, it did, Basil. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for calling. Always appreciate your call. And uh, have a great weekend. Great. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Mike. So now let's go through this, folks. Let's see. Yep, we've got a, a good amount of time here. This is what I'm going to do. I want you to show a couple of things. I want you to show... Um, uh, first of all, let me, I wrote it down, wrote it down, wrote it down, wrote it down. Oh, I wanted to show this right here. I hope this is it. Another signal. Oh, boy, I lost it. Not this one. It's this one here. Let me see if I can get it. Right there. Front page of Boston Globe today. Today's paper. Front page, September the 13th, 2013. Look at this. A brand new 58-story tower was approved for the edge of the Christian Science Plaza. 58-story back bay tower approved. This is now, let me show you if I can get this to be a little bit bigger. Oh, boy, I hope I can do that. Yeah, there it is. There's a projected. Oh, man, just look at that. If I can read this. The Prudential Tower is 750 feet. The Hancock Tower is 790 feet. And the new building is projected to be 600 and I think 90 feet. Is that what it is? 691 feet. Wow. Everything's starting to fall into place. And look at this. I mean, if I can show it here. I hope this is going to come up. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get it. Uh, it's coming. I'll show this to you right now. I'll slide along. Frankfurt. This is the Frankfurt Motor Show. Automobiles. Listen to this. A uh, Porsche. Is that a Porsche? I'll talk about it when we get back. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. 
just recently. Basil subscribers, closed out at your position and Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG. For more than an 86-hour profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, the opening call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began, and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. Learn about good health and fitness. Living a primal lifestyle with Nico and Paige. Next on TFNN. Hi folks, Basil Chapman. We are back. I'm just going to show you that picture once again. I think it came in a little late. I uh, hope this is the one. Yeah. This is from the Frankfurt Auto, Auto Show 2013. The Auto... In my, um, go to the front page of TFN and look at um, education or university, uh, Tiger University. You'll see immediately. You'll see an article. It's a very, it's a chapter from the book called um, "The Psychology of Investing." It's chapter eleven. So it's a chapter that I wrote. It was published by Wiley back in the early 1990s. No, back in the uh, in ninety nine, I think it was, and uh, or two thousand, and basically what it talks about is uh, the mega bull market still to come. An article that I'd written back in nineteen eighty six, eighty seven. Um, and I spoke about uh, the Cadillac will once again become the premier auto company, but the, there was a chapter that started off right at the very beginning, said uh, 250 mile per hour grand touring cars, um, the 4,000 uh, um, passenger um, boat, uh, uh, cruise ships to nowhere, um, tickers at McDonald's, 
it was very prescient, very, very prescient. But most importantly, we are now in that phase where the, we are starting to see in the 200 year, mile an hour era, era uh, uh, the automobiles that are capable of doing that, but are they are, they are production cars. These aren't cars that are just, these are cars you can buy in a showroom. Look at this from the Frankfurt show. It's a beautiful car. I think it's a Porsche or a Porsche, as some people say. Now, also in that article that I just showed from the Boston Globe, absolutely, oops, where is it? It's right here. Absolutely, there's another article that says Intel will close mass plant, cut 700 jobs. But Intel's a commodity producer. It's not, it's not a cutting edge. It's not linked in. It's not Facebook. It's a different era. Okay, now here's the other thing. In the, as long as I've been in, in the Boston area, when we start looking at hotel expansion, finally we're going to get that huge hotel expansion. It is invariably getting close to some kind of a, a pretty serious top. I suspect we've got at least another six months, eight months of, of a mega bull move, even if we had to have a 15% correction coming up at some point fairly soon. Not an issue. The issue is that I believe we're going to have that craziness that you get in a mega bull market before the very top comes, just as it always does. I don't see why not. Now, here's a technical question real quick. This is my analysis. Maybe just take a picture and do the analysis and you'll see that in the, in the 120 minute chart this is the only reading that I can give it that that was a PG with a brand new buy mode I didn't do that correctly in my, my um, opening call analysis I, I, should, I, I will change it I, I have changed it now but there it is and there's that inside wedge that, that rising wedge with a little chart pattern that I showed you yesterday with that cup formation now it's going to the top it says it's starting to it's starting to try to build a base with 50,175 as major support in the Dow now let's just go to the, what I'm looking at here real quickly. So the Dow to me is in leg B. There should be a leg C and a leg D. It doesn't tell me how high the Chapman wave. It just says a buy signal goes to a buy mode. It's in a buy mode right now. A buy mode should go to at least a D. That's number one. Number two is in the daily chart, it says 50,159 to 15,220 is very strong support. This is on the upside. The next level of resistance is 15,504. I know everybody says, <clears throat> you know, you can't take one chart uh, and, and extrapolate it. I, I'm saying, come on, I, I can show you charts. Let me do, do this right now. I'll put that up and you say to me, I don't care whether they renegotiate re or redo anything they want in the Dow. Look at these charts. You tell me which one gets rebalanced or anything. They look the same. That's the Dow. Uh, that's UNP. In fact, I didn't even know that. That's Union Pacific. This is, this is the SPY. This is General Electric. This is the Diamonds. They're all moving up synchronously. So... Look, and here is the QQQ. So the chart patterns can fluctuate a little bit, but basically the trends pr pretty much stay the same. So those are the parameters I'd be looking for. Even more importantly, if the volatility index starts to climb into the 1560s, 1620s, that's when we'll get a deeper sell-off. So have a fantastic weekend, everyone. Stay tuned for Living a Primal Lifestyle with Nico and Paige coming up and all the other shows at TFN. Check my workout. It's the opening call, front page of TFN. Profits and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.